Good afternoon. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. Today we're going to review Assessing Chapter 11 of Cultures and Herbs Fundamentals of Nursing. Please like and subscribe if you find this information helpful. Introduction. The introduction begins with the overview of the nursing process and it is defined as a systematic rational method of planning and providing individualized nursing care. The steps of the nursing process include assessing, diagnosing, planning, implementing, and evaluating. The nursing process is described as being cyclic, dynamic, interpersonal, collaborative, and patient-centered. It also uses problem solving and decision making skills and requires critical thinking and clinical reasoning. Assessing is collecting, organizing, validating, and documenting data. The purpose of assessing is to form a database, which is just a collection of information about your patient. And activities in assessing include gathering a nursing health history, conducting a physical assessment within 24 hours of admission, reviewing client records and nursing literature, and consulting support persons and any other health professionals. There are four types of assessment. The first is the initial assessment, which is usually done within 24 hours of admission. It's done to form that database of information about your patient. Next is the problem focus assessment, which focuses on the patient's problem. So if the patient comes in with a broken leg, you'll just assess the leg. Next is the emergency assessment, which assesses a life-threatening problem. A life-threatening problem can be anything that interferes with your airway, breathing, or circulation. Those are called the ABCs, and these can be new or overlooked problems. And lastly is the time-lapsed assessment, which is done after several months or a few weeks. It's done to reassess a problem. You can reassess a procedure that was done on a patient or any medications they may be taking. The collection of data should be systematic and continuous to reflect the changing in health status. It should also include a past history, including any allergies or past surgeries and also the patient's current problems. There are two types of data. They include subjective data and objective data. Subjective data is the symptoms, it's what the patient states, and it can also be what the support person interprets. So. Subjective data from a support person is their interpretation of the client's behavior. And objective data are signs. They can be measured or tested against an accepted standard. They are observed or collected by physical examination. So now that we reviewed subjective and objective data, I want to know, can you guess? I'm going to read you a statement and I want you to guess whether it's subjective or objective data. I feel weak when I try to stand. Is this subjective or objective data? Subjective data, because this is what the patient states. Client cried during interview. Is this subjective or objective data? Objective, because it's an observation. Client states he has a cramping pain in his abdomen, states I feel sick to my stomach. Is this subjective or objective data? Subjective, because it includes what the patient states. It's a direct quote from the patient. Wife states, he doesn't seem so sad today. Is this subjective or objective data? Subjective data, and from a secondary source. Remember, support people can give subjective data, and when it comes from a support person, is their interpretation of the patient's behavior. Blood pressure 90 over 50, apical pulse 100 beats per minute. Is this subjective or objective data? Objective data, because all of these things can be observed, they can be measured and tested against an accepted standard, and they can be collected during a physical assessment. Data collection methods. You can collect data by observing, which is any data gathered with the senses, including sight, touch, hearing, taste, and smell. You can also collect data by interviewing, which is defined as a planned communication or a conversation with the purpose. There are different types of interviews. They include a focused interview, directive interview, and a non-directive interview. A focused and a directive interview are pretty similar. They both focus in on a specific problem 
and they are done to collect specific information. And a non-directive interview is more open-ended and it allows the patient to control the conversation. It's more of just a regular old conversation and it's just done to build rapport between you and your patient. You can also ask closed questions and open-ended questions during an interview. A closed question is any question that can be answered using yes or no. And a leading question is a type of closed-ended question that suggests a particular response. So you can ask your patient, you are going to take your meds, right? And that leads them to say yes. And an open-ended question is any question that can be answered with anything other than yes or no. And a neutral question is a type of open-ended question. So you can ask your patient, how do you feel about that? This question is open. It doesn't suggest any particular response. So it's considered neutral and also open-ended. So we've made it to interview requirement. Before beginning an interview, remember that you need to review your agency's data collection form. And if there is no form, you need to prepare your own. This will help you to make sure that you collect all the necessary information. You also need to consider the time. Make sure you choose a time where your patient will be physically comfortable and have no interruptions. Make sure you consider the place and you have it well lighted and well ventilated. And also remember to always be eye level with your patient no matter what age they are. This can always make them feel comfortable and you definitely want them to be comfortable throughout the interview. And make sure you're two to three feet apart from your patient. This is considered a comfortable distance for communication. And just remember, we want our patients to be comfortable. So now that we've reviewed the interview requirements, let's go over question. So which of the following represent effective planning of the interview setting? Select all that apply. A, dim the lights to avoid stressing the patient's eyes. B, make sure that the conversation cannot be overheard by bystanders. C. Stand near the client's head while he or she is in the bed. D. Keep approximately two feet from the patient during the interview. E. Use a standard form to be sure all relevant data is gathered during the interview. So let's review the answers. A. Dim the lights to avoid stressing the patient's eyes. Remember, you want to have a well-lighted and well-ventilated area to make sure that your patient is comfortable, so you don't want to dim the lights. B. Make sure that the conversation cannot be overheard by bystanders. You definitely wanna do this because you always wanna provide privacy for your patient. This helps to adhere to HIPAA and also to make your patient feel comfortable during the interview. So you definitely wanna do B. C, stand near the client's head while he or she is in the bed. Remember, you always wanna be eye level with your patient no matter what age they are. So you don't wanna do C. B. Keep approximately two feet from the patient during the interview. Yes, remember two to three feet away from the patient is a comfortable distance and we want to make sure our patient is always comfortable. And E, use a standard form to be sure all relevant data is gathered during the interview. Yes, remember you wanna review your agency's data collection form and create your own if they do not have one so that you can collect all the necessary information. So the answer is B, D, and E. Organizing data. So you can organize data using conceptual models and frameworks and also non-nursing models. The first conceptual model and framework includes Gordon's functional health pattern framework, which includes 11 health patterns used to discern emerging patterns, which you can use to plan your nursing care. Next is Orem's self-care model. It describes the need for nutrition, elimination, and rest to promote normal functioning and development. And lastly is Roy's adaptation model, which includes four categories of observable behavior, including physiological, role function, self-concept, and interdependence. The first type of non-nursing model is the body system model. This model notates any abnormalities in the body system. Next is developmental theories by psychologists such as Erickson's, Fruits, and Piguet. You'll learn more about them when you take psychology, human growth, and development. And lastly is Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs is usually shown in a pyramid, with physiological needs being the base of the pyramid and the most important. These are your survival needs. The next most important is your safety and security needs. Then there's love and belonging, also called social needs. 
and then there's your self-esteem and your esteem needs and lastly your self-actualization you'll use maslow's hierarchy of needs to determine your priority when writing your nursing care plan so remember with assessing you want to collect the data organize the data validate the data and document the data when validating the data make sure that you have a complete assessment and that you collect any information that you missed you want to make sure that your objective and subjective data agree so make sure that what you're observing and what the patient's stating match and if they don't you need to investigate that further you also need to differentiate between cues and inferences. Cues are just subjective or objective data, and inferences are the nurse's interpretation or conclusion based on cues. Be careful not to jump to conclusions and make sure that all of your conclusions or inferences are logical and based on actual cues. And when documenting data, make sure that your data is accurate and factual. Make sure you do not include any judgment of the patient or any vague conclusions such as good appetite. Instead of saying good appetite, you can include the percentage of the food consumed. You made it to the end of chapter 11. I just wanna thank you so, so much for watching and good luck future nurses. If you found this information helpful, be sure to like and subscribe and tell all your nursing friends about this free, helpful resource.